Hello and welcome to another of our best day at work. Today we talk to Stephen Moyer. Stephen is an old friend of the network and on our advisory board. He's the Executive Director of Corporate Services at Edinburgh City Council. You should be able to see where he works just behind him. Um, so he's, he covers not just HR but also finance, legal, comms and more. And he was previously Chief People Officer for NHS England and in HR Director roles in local government and police amongst others. Stephen, thank you ever so much for doing this. It's very nice to see you again. And can I like to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I haven't got a, nearly as good a background as you. I've just got a <laughs> few trees and a cheap poster. Much prefer yours. Um, what was your best day at work? It's a great question and actually one I've had to think really hard about in terms of trying to identify a single best day at work. And um, the one I've settled on is when I was uh, Deputy Chief Executive at the Yorkshire Ambulance Service. So this must have been around 2012. And it might sound strange, but I'm going to choose a day that was actually a day with tragedy involved for some members of the public and their families, which is clearly awful. But the reason it was one of my best days at work, um, if I can just say that there was a serious uh, road traffic collision on one of the major um, motorways in West Yorkshire on the M62, which isn't far from the Yorkshire Ambulance Service headquarters in Wakefield. Uh, now, very serious incident involving a minibus, multiple vehicles, and obviously lots of people very, very seriously injured with life threatening injuries. Um, the reason I'm choosing that is one, my my direct boss, the chief executive at the time, was away on holiday, so I was I was it. I was I was looking after the ambulance service for the the whole of Yorkshire at that point. And of course, when you have a major incident like that, what you need to be able to do is make sure that in many ways everything else has to stop or other things drop, and you just have to respond. and And I have to say, um, the reason it was probably one of my best days at work is I couldn't have been prouder of the people. I, well, actually, not just proud, but it was a privilege to work with the people I worked with. So, for example, I had a couple of um, senior doctors that were based in ambulance headquarters working as deputy medical directors no hesitation from them straight out into a car and straight to the motorway uh, our colleagues in west yorkshire police shut down the motorway very quickly we borrowed air ambulances from other parts of the country as well because it was that serious an incident we ended up with something like six air ambulances having to land on the m62 to pick people up and take them to major trauma centers but i think the thing for me that was just really uh, remarkable to see was the way that staff responded. So people from all over Yorkshire, staff from all over the trust, just literally downing tools, doing whatever they needed to do to get there to support colleagues, first of all, who were first on scene, but then really importantly to do everything they could do to support the people that had been involved in the accident and, and clearly try and mitigate any possible tragedies. Now, clearly the incident itself didn't necessarily result in um, the most um, desirable of outcomes. We had unfortunately some tragedies. There were some people with life changing injuries as a result, but I couldn't, I have to say I was so proud of our staff at the point in time that I was involved in that. It was just to see the, the passion, the commitment, the requirement to do whatever they needed to do to just support these individuals and try to save lives basically. And then the bit that was even more uh, appealing from a personal perspective was the fact that I was able to meet people who'd been first on scene and respond later in the day and just check they were okay and make sure we were doing everything around them. Because of course, the tragedy and the trauma is not just for the patients, it's dealing with the major incident, the aftershock of that, the impact it has on colleagues. Uh, their adrenaline will have spiked. They're trained to deal with these things, but coming down from the adrenaline spike and also recognising that they've dealt with a very traumatic incident can have severe psychological consequences. So being able to be part of the debriefing, making sure colleagues were all right, making sure the support that we needed to put in place with them was really, really important. So I suppose for me, I've chosen that really challenging major incident as a best day at work because it, it demonstrates public service work at his very, very best. It demonstrates people doing whatever they needed to do to save lives, to care for individuals. And from my perspective as an organisational leader, it was a privilege to be able to support people because my role was about support rather than about becoming involved in the day-to-day -day issues. And more importantly, I wouldn't want to get in the way of our clinicians who were doing a superb job. So I think it was just um, best day at work because it was a privilege to be part of that and to be involved in some small way in supporting people. Yeah, thank you for putting that so cogently, Stephen. That's a, that's a very powerful story. I like that a lot. Um, can I ask, um, because people watching this will be uh, intrigued, I'm sure. Um, well, firstly, you're not the first uh, person in one of these interviews by any means to say well, uh, it's about the difference you make as an HR leader. Uh, mm. Perhaps that's a glib way of putting it. Um, but nevertheless, I think the point is 
powerfully made. And secondly, um, when you were stepping up to chief executive uh, and those times when you've done that, what have you noticed about the difference between that and the HR role, for instance, on that day? Yeah, it's a great, that's a great follow up. I mean, the difference between, I suppose, the difference between being the chief executive on an acting basis and being the HRD or somebody who's responsible for workforce. The first thing is, of course, you're responsible for everything and accountable for everything. So you notice the, there's a weight settles on your shoulders that is even more different to being the HRD. When I've been an HRD, one of the big opportunities is you get to advise, you get to guide, you get to give your view, you're part of the consensus decision making. But the buck stops somewhere and in my experience ultimately the buck has to stop with the chief executive so i suppose in many ways it's that different weight of responsibility being an hrd is a huge privilege and it's very challenged and it's a very responsible role but at the same time there's there's something more about being a chief executive that's different and brings with it different pressures different weight so actually um i had to recognize that i had different views to take into account from all of the functions whether they were operations medical finance hr so you have to take a view on everything based on the best advice available to you so you're even more reliant on the team than you would be as an HRD, you're absolutely reliant on having good people around you. So I suppose some of the learning similar to being an HRD, the flip side is that level of accountability and the need to remain calm and to provide guidance and a clear direction about what needs to happen. Um, you do all of that in terms of functional leadership as an HRD, but suddenly being in organizational leadership role it's very very different prospect. So it's um, yeah, it's a different it's a different order of um, magnitude, shall we say. Nice way of putting it. I like the, the uh, liner, even more reliant on your team as well. That's a nice point. I like that makes a lot of sense. Different rate of responsibility. Talking of different ways of responsibility, what was your worst day at work? Oh, well, so worst days at work. This is one when I was definitely an HRD. And um, again, without wanting to go into the details too much, uh, when I was the HR director for Cambridgeshire County Council, uh, one of the most significant things you can do in a local authority or in fact as an HRD generally is support your board or your councillors in my case with the appointment of a new chief executive. Uh, and I'd been doing that. We'd been running the process to appoint a successor to the current chief executive who was due to retire. And I remember having thought we'd got through to a successful conclusion. The post had been offered to an outstanding candidate and the following morning um, the leader of the council walked into my office and said she'd had second thoughts about the appointment and had actually phoned the individual we'd offered the position to and said that she didn't think she could work with him and she'd like him to withdraw from the process. So um, you can imagine the blood drained from my face when she told me that she'd done this um, because first of all she didn't have the authority to do this unilaterally. It wasn't for her as a personal decision. And then secondly, it was having to manage the risk and the consequences of that. And at the same time, trying to safeguard the individual who'd been asked to withdraw from the process. Um, if I can just say that this went on for probably a couple of months afterwards, a uh, major position that put me in a very challenged point, back to this organisational leadership point again, actually I found myself having to be in charge of um, working through the communications director and the director of governance to deal with a number of issues, working across the political groups and trying to get to a position that was both the right one, but a difficult one to achieve. So what ultimately happened was the then leader of the council resigned. She stepped down because she realised she'd probably overstepped the boundaries of what she was authorised to do. Her own political group were pressurising her to make sure she, she'd taken the right decision. And the bit that I was really pleased to say is the candidate who was absolutely outstanding for the role, we were able to go back to. He still accepted the position. He joined and he was a great chief executive for the county council following that for a number of years and i was very privileged to work with him i have to say it could have been my worst day at work both because it's how do you manage a situation like that when confronted with it and then secondly when that chief executive took up post you could almost imagine does that mean i'll be um, getting my p45 at the same point because does he see me as part of the problem or part of the solution so fortunately i'd managed the relationship with him and with others to enable myself to dare i say both survive that process but also try and advise and provide the right support to everybody throughout. Hugely challenging because actually um, I had a couple of people that were more senior than me that I wasn't able to discuss any of this with because I had to deal with it directly with the leader of the council, directly with the comms and governance director. So yeah, it was um, it was worst day at work in the sense that um, 
one of those crises that you never expect to deal with. One of those things that probably, if I ever write my memoirs, people would believe it was a, a work of fiction. But in reality, it was uh, one of the most testing or challenging things I've had to do. And the, I, I suppose, why was it worst day at work? Because the previous day had seen, been such a positive one where I thought we'd got to a really great conclusion, only to then find a complete U-turn being positioned in front of me that following morning and literally thinking, oh God, how do I deal with this? How am I going to manage this through? And how can I make sure that I'm obviously trying to support everybody as best I can and at the same time, make sure the organisation gets the right outcome? So uh, hugely challenging, but delighted with where we finally got to and saddened by the fact that the individual leader of the council ultimately chose to step down because she was outstanding as well as a political leader. I think this was just a very unfortunate situation of um, uh, poor judgment is probably the best way of describing it. So, so yeah, that was. Um, I'll give you that as an example of worst day, or, or yeah, definitely worst day of the work. And what did I learn from it? Um, well, whenever I'm appoint involved in a chief executive appointment again, I'll absolutely make sure there's even more robust uh, decision making and governance around it. And unfortunately. I can say that uh, that learning stood me in good stead when I was involved in appointing um, now Lord Stevens as the chief executive of the NHS in England and supporting the NHS England board. Of course, he's just stepped down recently from that position. But yes, I took some of that learning with me and made sure that the governance was watertight, made sure that we dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, and more importantly, made sure that uh, I was giving the board the best support possible. Excellent. That's a hugely instructive story, I think, really, because I think a lot of our members watching this will um, have a lot of sympathy. Uh, it will work at the very least as an analogy, if not as a direct comparison, <laughs> um, whether it's uh, working with leaders, leaders having their moments, should we say, I'm trying to be generous here, mm. um, and uh, HR essentially managing that, should we say, if not frankly mopping up um, and the sort of the highs and lows of that and how you manage that. And I think it's particularly uh, instructive, as you say, it's like, great, we've made a decision high day, literally the next day, oh my God, it's all falling apart. Um, what do we do? How do we rescue this uh, in the best way possible? Stephen, thank you so much. Um, That's all. Hugely enjoyable, great storytelling, very nice to see you. Much love to Edinburgh. And, and thank you, Richard. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Great to talk to you and, and look forward to catching up again soon. Cheers, Stephen. Okay, take care.